Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be showing you easing curves within principle. I'm going to be talking a little bit about what exactly an easing curve does. I'm also going to be talking about how you can create your own custom ones as well as use the built in amazing easing functions directly in principle. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so in the last video, we talked a bunch about the animation timeline here, and we were able to tweak our animation in different ways. Let's go ahead and check out easings now. I'm gonna move this keyframe back to the one second, or the uh, point three seconds, and now what we can do is we can actually click on this default, and what this is going to do is open up our easing. Now, you might be wondering, well, what's up with this easing? Now, we have this graph here, and for somebody who doesn't maybe know exactly what's going on in this graph, it might be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to mention that what we have here is we have an animation essentially over time. So as we go from right to left, that's the time. And as we go up and down, that's sort of the process of the animation. So at the very beginning, we're at zero, zero, there's no time has passed and none of the animation has passed. With this default easing, it comes up and in the initial part of the animation, quite a bit happens, right? You can see the rate at which the animation is happening is greater than what would just be a flat linear line. Now, as this goes up, the animation starts to slow down and then it slows into its final position. So when we click this, it might not be entirely obvious, but the animation goes a bit slower towards the end of it. Now, this isn't a dramatic easing curve. Now, I wanna affect all of these at once if I'm going to change it. So I'm gonna click and drag all of these, then select the easing. Now, you'll notice when we select ease in, what this means is essentially you're easing into the animation. Its fastest point is going to be towards the end. However, the fastest point, even with this, is still just barely above linear. A linear animation here, as you can see, is just this straight line. Now, you almost never want to use linear animations. It just feels entirely unnatural. That's why there's this little frowny emoji next to it, because it exists, but I can't imagine a situation where I would really want to do that. And if you get into animating for the web with CSS and stuff like that, learning about easings is gonna be really nice because what you're gonna do is you're gonna be able to actually enter your own easing curves with these values. So if we select ease in, you'll notice that we have this very basic ease in. If we wanna check this out, Let's see that again. You can see it starts off slower than it ends. It slowly speeds up over time. And you know what? These are gonna be easier to see if we do extend this. So let's go ahead and extend this time to one second. And let's go ahead and see this again. Okay, so as you can see, it just barely starts off slower and then gets faster. Let's go ahead and check that out in a modified version what we can do is actually grab this little handle here and we can drag it to the right. And what you'll notice with this particular animation, if we drag it further and further, right? Uh, what you'll notice is that this is still an ease in, you're easing in and then it's really speeding up. So this time what we're going to see is a dramatic slow to big, slow to big. Cool. Now let's go ahead and check out the ease out is literally the exact same thing except for reversed. The start is linear and then as we go, it gets slower. So let's pull this here and as you can see, it's gonna go really fast in the start and then slow down. So really fast, slow down. Now, some of the principles of animation is that when you have an object that's entering the screen, it should be at its fastest point when it's entering the screen. And then if it's leaving the screen, it should be at its fastest point when it's leaving the screen. So if you're having a block fly on, right, from out of screen onto screen, you're gonna wanna use an ease out. 
because the ease out is going to slow it down at the end and its fastest point is gonna be when it arrives. Again, if you're taking a block and you're throwing it out of your canvas, you're gonna be using an ease in. So it's almost opposite, right? If something's animating out, you're gonna use an ease in. If something's animating in, you're gonna e use an ease out. It's important to visualize these curves. Now, if we select ease both, you'll notice we get what is essentially an S curve. If we modify this, it's gonna be slow at the start and at the end, but in the middle, it's gonna be really fast. Now, this is a more useful type of easing if you're doing something like this where the object is always on the screen and it fits the sort of style or feel that you're going for. A lot of times with easing patterns, you're looking to replicate some sort of physics-based animation. Now, lastly, we have spring. And you'll notice spring is totally different in this case. Because a spring isn't using a linear curve like this, it's using what is essentially a tension and a friction. Now that's interesting because you still could do a spring and a bounce with a, a, with a more complex easing curve, but Principal has uh, taken a bit of a way that the way that the iOS or you're defining animations in native where you're saying, hey, there's a tension, and a friction. Okay, so let's go ahead and check some of this stuff out. We have like a 20 friction and we select this and you can see it bounces up like crazy. Let's go ahead and modify that and greatly increase the friction. And one thing you'll notice with this line here is as this goes, this is the bounce essentially of the animation. So if we increase this friction, we're gonna have way less bounce. But if we decrease this to the point of something like this, uh, this is gonna be sort of bananas, right? That's just freaking out. Uh, that's essentially what the animation is doing. So if we, let's bump this back up to something more practical. And see, that's like a pretty solid bounce. It's still going a few times. And if we decrease the tension right now, which is sky high, right? This is a large tension. Then we're going to get a little bit smoother of a fare. So there we go. Now it's coming in. It just bounces a couple of times. So the spring animation is definitely going to be one that's going to be sort of trial and error. You're going to want to play with the values and see what works for you. But as you can imagine, uh, tension is sort of how much pent up energy this thing has and, and friction is going to be the amount of resistance. So these are easing curves. You have access to change the easing curve on every single property of every single animation you're doing, both individually or you can do it as a group. If we want to only bounce, let's go ahead and only bounce the, uh, let's do the height. So we can have a spring on the height and now only the height is going to bounce. So as you can see, again, just like we had before, you have total control over your animations using both easing and timing functions. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to help support the creation of these free tutorials, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and you can purchase this series, gaining access to extra videos where I show you how to recreate some of my favorite principal documents. So as always, this is Scott. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.